king of my heart Be the fountain where I run The fountain I drink from Oh, he is my song Let the king of my heart Be the shadow where I hide The ransom for my life Oh, he is my song You are good, good God is good, and it is really good to worship with you today here at Memorial United Methodist Church. If this is your first time worshiping with us online, it is great to have you be here with us. And if this is your uh, 52nd time worshiping with us, we are so glad that you're worshiping as well. If you are a recipient of one of our Mac packs or whether you're watching this video on YouTube, all of us are worshiping together no matter the time or place because of the beauty of this technology, and it is great to be able to do that. I want to invite you to get any of your communion elements ready so you can be prepared for that later in our service. And I also want to remind you that if you are worshiping online with us, that we have our community feed. And there's opportunities there to share prayer concerns, to share praises, to pray for one another, and just greet one another throughout the service. So please uh, make use of that as a part of our online community together, because it is great for us here in the sanctuary to see those uh, popping up and for all of us to experience our grace-filled family in this online technology. So I invite you to use that uh, as you feel led. As we continue in our worship, we welcome the light of Christ. And so if you have a candle with you at home, I invite you to get those out and light uh, the candles with us as we welcome God into our spaces where we are worshiping and into our life together. May the light of Christ and the peace of Christ be with you. I also invite you uh, to share the peace of Christ with one another, either on our community feed or you can text uh, one of some of your friends or family members, invite them to the service, share the service, and share the peace of Christ with them. May the peace of Christ be with you all. Pastor Charlie? Thank you, Pastor Drew. Let's join together now in our opening call to worship, the words of which are going to appear on your screen. When God speaks, all creation answers. 
The pale winter moon cries, glory. The sun hums a song as it warms the earth. When God speaks, lives are changed. All those held hostage by oppression are set free. The voiceless shout the story of salvation. When God speaks, everything is turned inside out. The wise learn the language of grace from little children. The strong take lessons from the powerless. Come, let us worship God. We're now led in worship by Joey and Jeannie. Thou fount of every blessing, tune my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing, call for songs of loudest praise. Teach me some melodious sonnet, sung by flaming tongues above. Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it, mount of thy redeeming love. Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy grace, Lord, like a fetter, find my wandering to thee. Prone to wonder, Lord, I feel it. Prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, Lord, take and seal it. Seal it for thy courts above. Come thou fount of every blessing. Tune my heart to sing thy grace. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasure that I seek. You are my all in all. precious jewel, Lord, to give up, I'd be a fool. You are my all in all. Jesus, Lamb of God, worthy is your name. Jesus, Lamb Rising again, I bless your name. You are my all in all. When I fall down, you pick me up. When I undie, you fill my cup. You are my all in all. Jesus, let so much for the beautiful music this morning. Let us join together with our affirmation of faith using the words that we find in our hymnal from the Church of Canada. 
We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh, to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the Spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope. In life, in death, in life beyond death, God is with us. We are not alone. Thanks be to God. Amen. My friends, my favorite people, come close to the screen. I have things for you to see today. We are excited that you are here, no matter how old you are, no matter how young you are. This is for you. Come on down. Come close. I want to show you some things. Now, some of you are a little bit young for this movie and that you were not even born when it came out, but it's not that old. And many of you are going to remember. So I brought some of my things to show you. Do you remember who this is? Yes, it's Joy from Inside Out, the movie Inside Out. Now, if you're sitting there thinking, Inside Out, what movie is that? This is your homework. After church, not right now, after church, you're going to go and you're going to watch Inside Out because it is a spectacular movie. This is Joy. Okay, then we had, this is her counterpart. She's like the Eeyore, Sadness. This is sad. So we have Joy and we have Sadness. Then this one's the sassy one. This is disgust. She's like a teenager, right? Ha <laughs> ha. I know. I know you're watching my teenage friends. I'm just teasing you. Then this one is like every four-year-old in the world. Fear. They have like weird fears. Okay, maybe not all of them, just mine. Fear. And then this is the one I want to talk about. These are so cute, aren't they? Then this is the one I want to talk about today. Who is this? Who is this, my little friend? Did you say it? Anger. This is anger. And he, when he gets mad, fire explodes out of the top of, the stuff, out of, the top of his character. He, get, he feels everything deep inside. And then he just, boosh, explodes in a fit, of, a fit of rage. None of you have ever done that before. I know that to be true because you are all like this one. Perfect little angels filled with joy. Okay, you're right. Everybody has all of these emotions. All our little friends are inside of us, and we have all of this in us. But today, we're going to get rid of all of these. We're going to talk about this one. This is anger, right? In our story today, Jesus gets angry, but it's not like this little guy. It's not just out of a fit of rage that was unprovoked and undetermined. It is out of righteous anger. Do you know what that means? Do you know what righteous anger means? It does not mean, oh, my brother stole my toy and I got mad at him. That is not righteous anger. It does not mean, oh, my parents set a boundary and I got in trouble and they made me clean my room. That's not what that means. Oh, I got picked on at school and it hurt my feelings and now I'm angry. Okay, we're on to something there. Here's a, this is an example of righteous anger. Oh, I'm at school and somebody picks on my friend. That makes me angry. And I feel called to do something about that. Not to hurt them, but to say, that's not cool. That's righteous anger. Today, Jesus, in our story, Jesus walks into the temple where they worshiped, and there are people selling tickets to church, basically. There's a lot more to it. You'll get to hear it in the scripture. And Jesus says, uh-uh, no, sir. 
No, ma'am, we do not sell tickets to church. You don't need money to get into church. Church is for all people. And he takes the tables and he flips them over. Did you know that Jesus got angry like that? He says, this is the house of my father, and we will not do that in here. It's important to figure out what we are, we don't need him anymore. It's important to figure out what we are called to, what gets us all angry inside. Not anger, like fire out of our head anger, but as in this is wrong and we need to do something about this. Everybody has something like that. That is one of the things that Jesus is teaching us in the story. There's lots more. Pastor Charlie will tell you about a lot more. That is one thing today. So I want you to ponder that as we go into the next thing. Let us pray. God, help us right the wrongs in our world. Amen. Pastor Charlie? Yeah, thank you, Pastor Carrie. You know, Pastor Carrie is absolutely right. As we look at the world around us, there are places and spaces that we can see which really are broken. And she's also right in saying that those are places and spaces that we want to do something about. And there are many ways, of course, that we do that. Sometimes it takes us to roll up our sleeves and do something to, uh, to make a difference in the world and to repair some of the brokenness. Sometimes it's as simple as showing up and being there for a friend or for a loved one, to listen to them, to hear their brokenness, and to remind them that they are loved. There are other ways, of course, that we join in with the overall work of God, which is a work of repairing the brokenness in our world, the creation of a new heaven and new earth. We do that by showing up, we do that by being friends, and we do that by giving of ourselves, by giving of our resources. At this time in our service of worship every single week, we celebrate that we bring our gifts and our offerings and our tithes and ourselves before God in the great hope that we join in with the work of God in our world to repair the brokenness that we see all around us. And so we bring our tithes and offerings here today. We bring them in faith that they join together with the work of God in the world. And there are a number of ways that you can bring those gifts today. You can give electronically, or you can give in person, or you can give through the mail. You're able to see right now all of those ways on screen in front of you. We've done our best to open up those ways so that we can all access and all join in on what God is doing in this way. And so, dear friends, however you bring your gift today, or whenever you bring your gift today or in the days ahead, we do so with joyful and with generous hearts, trusting that God receives these gifts, blesses them, and puts them to work for the use and the building of God's kingdom. Will you join me as we pray over these gifts just now? Gracious God, we do give thanks that we can bring our offerings before you, and as we give them to you, Lord, returning to you what was yours anyway, we ask that you will receive these gifts, bless them, and put them to use for the building of your kingdom and for the glorifying of your name. We ask that in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. God of the heavens, 
and the earth. We look around and see your glory in the fingerprints upon creation. We hear your voice each and every day, and we seek to grow in wisdom as we listen to you. Therefore, O oh God, let us tune our ears to what you are saying to us, and let's discover your will at work in our world. God, your commandments are so good. They revive our souls as we seek to follow you today. And so God, help us to cling to your will. Help us to rejoice in your truth rather than the ways of this world and the lies that it teaches. Help us, O oh God, to not be distracted by the pursuit of wealth or riches, but instead to count your love as better than gold and sweeter than honey. Lord, we confess to you that we do fall short of your love. We rebel against you, and we pray that you would give us your forgiveness. Clear us of our walk to them. Bring before our eyes the sins that we often try to hide away from, so that in the light of your grace, they may no longer have power over us. But instead, we shall be redeemed, restored as your blameless children once again. And so, God, let the words of our mouths, the ponderings of our hearts, be acceptable to you, who are our rock and our redeemer. We pray for our church. We pray for those in our congregation who are sick. We pray for those in our congregation who are struggling. We pray for those in our congregation who are caring for each other those who are weary, those looking for work and trying to make ends meet. We pray for the frontline healthcare workers. We pray for those who are seeking to teach, who are seeking to administer, who are seeking to do works of justice and compassion in our world. Give to them all and give to us your strength. Give to us all your patience, so that we can be your witnesses in this world. God, we unite these prayers and the prayers of our own heart together. As we join in the prayer you taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. Reading today is from the second epistle of John, verses 13 to 22. Jesus cleanses the temple. The Passover of the Jews was near, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. In the temple, he found people selling cattle, sheep, and doves, and the money changers seated at the table. Making a whip of cords, he drove all of them out of the temple both the sheep and the cattle. He also poured out the coins of the money changers and overturned their tables. He told those who were selling the doves, take these things out of here. Stop making my father's house a marketplace. His disciples remembered that it was written, zeal for your house will consume me. The Jews then said to him, what? Sign, can you show us for doing this? Jesus answered them, Destroy this temple, and in three days I will raise it up. The Jews then said, This temple has been under construction for 46 years, and will you raise it up in three days? But he was speaking of the temple of his body. After he was raised from the dead, his disciples remembered that he had said this, and they believed the scripture and the word that Jesus had spoken. The word of God for the people of God. 
Thanks be to God. Location, location, location. Those are words that you will hear in conversations about real estate and property. The meaning of them is very simple. It doesn't matter whether you have the nicest piece of property with all of the nicest things in it. If that property is not in the right place, its overall value will be less than. I can still remember the first time that I learned that lesson, the importance of location. Very early on in our marriage, Margaret and I went to view a house that was for sale in Belfast. It was this wonderful three-story, four-bedroomed Edwardian townhouse that had been well-maintained and looked after for the duration of its life. It was beautifully presented for sale at that time, and naively, we thought that we might be interested in it. But we were soon taught a lesson about the importance of location. It would not have been a wise purchase for us to pursue because of the place that the house was situated in. It was in a quite tired and run-down area of the city that was forecast to only continue its decline. Location, location, location. We backed out, and that was that. In the Gospels, location matters too. Where a story is recorded by the gospel writers is an important thing to consider as we seek to understand what it is that they are trying to say to us. Today we have read that familiar story of the time when Jesus went into the temple. He was seemingly agitated by what he saw there, and he ended up causing a little bit of chaos. This passage, taken on its own, of course, has often been used by preachers and teachers as a justification for righteous anger. Jesus got angry about the right things, so I can get angry or upset about the right things too, right? That certainly is a valid interpretation of the text, an interpretation that can be made when we read the story, read of the event alone, and do not consider it as part of a bigger story that John is working on. And it's important for us to remember, location, location, location. I want to say to you today that where this story occurs in John's gospel is as important as anything else that we might read into the actual words in the text themselves. This story is one that's recorded in all four of the gospel accounts, which is significant in and of itself. When Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John all include the same story, you can bet your bottom dollar that it is a significant one and it is worth paying attention to. Are they all telling this story for the same reason, to communicate exactly the same thing? Well, that's debatable for one major reason. I wonder if you can guess it. I've given you a couple of clues already in my introduction. That's right. Location, location, location. In the synoptics, that is Matthew, Mark, and Luke, the story is located towards the end of their accounts, after Jesus has entered Jerusalem for the last time. They all pitch Jesus' turning of the tables at the temple as the final straw for the authorities who sought to bring Jesus down. And soon after this moment, they would arrest him. But John... Well, John is different. John has this story right at the very beginning of his gospel in chapter 2, and he has tagged it right onto the back of his record of Jesus' first miraculous sign, changing water into wine at the wedding party in Cana. Now, it's widely understood that John doesn't waste any words in his gospel. He doesn't waste any details either. Everything that we read in this wonderful gospel account is carefully placed together, meticulously planned out to point to the bigger theological takeaways that John wants his readers to get. And primary amongst those is this, that Jesus is indeed 
the Word of God, the Son of God, the promised Messiah, and that it is in Jesus that we will find light and new life. John, therefore, is not using this story as a vehicle to move us towards Jesus' arrest. He's going to do that in a different way at the end of his gospel. Instead, John is using this story to point to a bigger theological point, that Jesus is the very Word of God made flesh, and that his presence on earth points us towards a brand new work of God that is taking place that is going to dismantle the old ways through which people have connected with God in order to open up a brand new way for all people. Stick with me here. The temple is the center of religious and civic life. Jesus is going there at a time close to the Passover festival. That is not a strange thing at all. In fact, the hustle and the bustle and the commerce of what's going on in the temple isn't strange either. You see, if people were going to engage fully in this special religious festival, they would, of course, need animals to sacrifice. Where would they get the animals that they needed? That's right, at the temple. So Jesus is not making a complaint because the sacred nature, business, and commerce. Instead, the command to stop making the Father's house a marketplace is an invitation being made to consider a brand new way. Prior to this, and according to the ancient tradition, the only location where God might be found was, that's right, in the temple. John's gospel is a 21-chapter takedown of that idea, replacing it with the understanding that God is available to be found by all people and will be found by all people through the person of Jesus Christ alone, and not in a physical location such as the local temple. Now, this is hard to understand, right? I mean, surely human beings have to do something They have to go somewhere. They have to sacrifice something in order to be considered worthy enough to be loved and valuable enough to be saved by God. I mean, that's the transactional system that we recognize. That's the transactional system that we know and understand in our world, right? You just don't get something for nothing. The Jewish authorities have some trouble with what Jesus is insinuating, and they ask him for a sign, which is no mistake in John's gospel. Remember, this story is being told on the back of the story of Jesus' first sign as to who he was. Later on in the gospel, John is going to point out six other signs that tell us that Jesus really is who he says he is. Jesus is the location in which we find God. Knock down this temple, and I will rebuild it in three days, Jesus says. Now, we have the benefit of having read the entire story already. And so, with the end of the story already in our minds, we know what John is doing here. He's doing a wee bit of foreshadowing. The temple that Jesus is referring to is, of course, not the building that they are standing in, but is instead his own body. And the rebuilding that he is talking about is a reference, of course, to Jesus Christ's bodily resurrection. The temple is not the building, but is instead Jesus' own body. Jesus is where God is located and through whom God must be worshipped. That's what's being communicated by John in placing this story right here where it is. And that is why in just a couple of chapters' time, when Jesus meets a Samaritan woman by a well, she is going to ask him about the location of true worship, and he's going to say to her that a day is coming when true worship will not take place either on this mountain on which they are stood or in Jerusalem. Location, location, location. You know, when Margaret and I went to view that house in Belfast, we were really impressed by what we saw. I mean, it it looked good from top to bottom. All the rooms looked great. It, It really did impress us. We might even have gone for it were it not for the advice and counsel that we received from those who were wiser than ourselves. You see, ultimately, 
we were just looking in the wrong place. I wonder sometimes if we don't all waste a lot of time looking for God in the wrong places. You may have heard the saying that every man who knocks on the door of a brothel is unknowingly looking for God. The idea being that we humans have such a, a deep need for God in our lives when we seek after other things such as power or riches or romance or position or knowledge, well, we're just looking for God in all the wrong places. That notion is not just limited to non-religious people. I wonder, actually, sometimes if we religious people are sometimes guilty of looking for God in all the wrong places, too. When we look for God, thinking that we will find God only within a particular philosophy or worldview, or among those who hold a certain theological position, you know what? We're looking for God in the wrong place. When we look for God in a, in a building or in a denominational structure, we're looking for God in the wrong place. When we look for God in a worship style, we're looking for God in the wrong place. Now, all of those things might be very important to us. We're all individuals. We have all of our own tastes, of course, but we can't make the mistake of thinking that we're going to find God in those specific things. No, according to John, the gospel writer, the only place that you or me or anyone else will find God is in the person of Jesus Christ. So here's my question for you, church. Where are you looking for God today? Where are are you looking for God today? I mean, really, ask yourself that question very honestly. And if your honest answer is that you're looking for God anywhere other than in the person of Jesus Christ, then I say to you that you're looking for God in the wrong place and that it's time for you to turn once again towards Jesus. All of the places that you might be looking might look really good. They might be very appealing or attractive. Of course they may be. But remember, location, location, location. Finding what you're looking for is all about where you are looking. So let's stop looking for God in all of the wrong places. And let's start looking for God in and through his son, Jesus Christ, who we get to know in the Gospels, whose presence we know by the power of his Holy Spirit. Stop looking in other places, looking to other things in the hope that we will find God there. And let's turn our gaze towards Jesus. The author and preacher out of Missouri, Brian Zahn, says these words. He says, if you want to get to know God, get to know Jesus, because Jesus is the very image of the invisible God. That much is true. So it's on you and me in our searching and seeking for God to know that we will find God in the person of Jesus Christ. And it's on you and me then to take the time and to do all that we can to get to know Jesus better to allow Jesus to shape our lives and to guide our steps. Where are you looking for God today, friends? It's time to turn our gaze towards Jesus. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Will you please pray with me? And gracious God, we do give thanks for your goodness and for your mercy. We give thanks that you sent us your Son, Jesus Christ, to live among us, to move among us, to speak among us, so that we would know the very heart and the very character of God the Father. And so today, as we respond to this word, as we respond to this invitation to get to know you, Lord, would you lead us, 
would you guide us? Would you open up our hearts and our minds so that we may know you more and follow you more closely? We ask that in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. We move together now into a time of Holy Communion together. The words of our liturgy, the responses should come up on screen for you. And so please follow along and at home say the words of this liturgy along with us. We do hope that you have your crackers, your juice in place and are ready to join in this sacrament with us now. As we say, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You brought all things into being and you called them good. From the dust of the earth, you formed us into your image and breathed into us the breath of life. And When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. When rain fell upon the earth for 40 days and 40 nights, you bore up the ark on the waters, saved Noah and his family, and made covenant with every living creature on the earth. When you led your people to Mount Sinai for 40 days and 40 nights, you gave us your commandments and made us your covenant people. When your people forsook your covenant, your prophet Elijah fasted for 40 days and 40 nights. And on your holy mountain, he heard your still, small voice. And so, with your people on earth and with all of the company of heaven, we praise your name and we join in their unending hymn, saying, Holy, 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 holy Lord, Lord God, God of power and might, heaven and, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, Hosanna in, in the highest. highest. Holy are you and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. When you gave him to save us from our sin, your Spirit led him into the wilderness, where he fasted for forty days and for forty nights to prepare for his ministry. When he suffered and died on a cross for our sin, you raised him to life, presented him alive to the apostles during forty days, and exalted him at your right hand. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. Now, when we, your people, prepare for the yearly feast of Easter, you lead us to repentance for sin and the cleansing of our hearts, that during these forty days of Lent, we may be gifted and graced to affirm the covenant you made with us through Christ." And we remember that on the night in which he gave himself up for us, Jesus gathered with his friends. He took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, and gave it to them and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And when the supper was over, he took the cup gave thanks to you and gave it to his disciples and said, drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for everyone for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink of it in remembrance of me. And so in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and a living sacrifice in union with Christ's offering for us, as we proclaim together the mystery of our faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. So pour out your Holy Spirit upon us gathered here, and upon these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, so that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your Spirit, make us one with Christ one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory and we feast at his heavenly banquet through your Son, Jesus Christ. With the Holy Spirit in your holy church, all honor and glory is yours, almighty God, now and forever. 
Amen. Amen. And so, dear friends, the table is set and the feast is ready and the invitation has been made to all people. This is not our table here. This is not a Methodist table or a Catholic table or a Baptist table. This is Christ's table set virtually this morning by Christ into which all people are invited to gather. So the invitation is for you and for all who are with you in this moment. The invitation is to those who know and love the Lord or who seek to know and love the Lord. So let us gather in these moments and remember Christ and the very depths of his love for us. I'm going to invite those who are in the sanctuary here this morning to come forward now and we will share in this moment of Holy Communion together. So, dear friends, we remember that this is the body of Christ which has been broken for us. Take and eat in remembrance of him and of his love for us. And this is the blood of Christ shed for us. Take and drink in remembrance of him and of his love for us. Let us pray together. And gracious God, we do thank you that you feed us with the sacrament, with your body and with your blood. May they be that which sustains us in these days ahead, in these weeks ahead, so that we may know the very heart and character of God fully. We may represent you well in this world. We may follow you throughout this world as you guide our steps and lead us in the pathways you have called us to. We ask that in and through the name of Jesus. Amen. Each week we have a number of ways that we can engage with what is happening here at Memorial. And we have put together a video with a few of those ways highlighted now. And so I hope you'll turn your attention to what is said there. Hey friends, it's Carrie Mack here with another Just Three Things, where you learn how you can serve, grow, and worship this week at Memorial. Let's get started. If you've been taking advantage of our Wednesday dinners, then you already know how great they are. Well, this week we've got another awesome menu item. It's lemon butter tilapia with vegetable rice pilaf, succotash, a salad, roll and raspberry ricotta cake for dessert. So be sure to get your RSVPs in. You can visit mumconline.com forward slash dinners, or you can call the church office. Now it's the beginning of the month, which means we'll be premiering our Tuesday worship Sunday night at six o'clock. That'll come through email, it'll come through Facebook Live, and it'll also be on YouTube. And you can get it anytime during the month at mumconline.com forward slash Tuesday. This is a beautiful, peaceful, contemplative service. It's a wonderful way to end a Sunday evening. It's a wonderful addition to your Lenten discipleship. There's time of prayer, there's time of quiet, there's time of music, there's time of art. I really hope that you'll take advantage of it. Friends, we're two weeks into Lent, which means we're getting closer to Holy Week. And we have a lot planned. I hope you've gotten your goodie bag from the drive through event because this has so much you need to help enhance your Holy Week and help enhance your Lent. If you do not have one, they're in the worship spaces right now, and you can also pick one up in the Parton Center. Now, Holy Week begins on March 28th with Palm Sunday. We'll have our regular worship then, 8 o'clock in the Sanctuary, 9.15 in Maxwell Hall, and also 11 o'clock on Facebook Live. And then we go into Thursday. 
We have Monday, Thursday, and Monday, Thursday worship is going to be 6.30 on Facebook Live, and it'll also be on YouTube, and of course, it'll be in your Mac packs if you get one of those. On Friday, we have our Good Friday service at 6.30 on campus. That's going to be in the green space behind the Parton Center where we have our outdoor services. RSVPs are going to be needed for that, so be on the lookout for the RSVP link at mumconline.com forward slash Easter, or you can call the church office. And then we get to Easter Sunday. We're going to have five services on Easter Sunday. An 8 o'clock service in the sanctuary, a 9 o'clock service in Maxwell Hall, another 10 o'clock service in the sanctuary, an 11 o'clock service in the green area behind Parton Center, so bring your chair and your mask, and then an 11 o'clock service also on Facebook Live. Now the services on campus are going to need RSVPs and masks, and that link will be available soon at mumconline.com forward slash Easter. Now, of course, you, there are no reservations needed for our 11 o'clock online service. We hope you'll take advantage of one of these Easter services, friends. We're going to have so much to celebrate this year on Easter Sunday. And get involved this week. Find a way you can be the hands and feet of Christ in our community, in our world. And I'll see you next week. And so, friends, we do have a number of ways for you to engage uh, to join in with classes and small groups as well as we each seek to get to know Christ. You know, in that video, pa uh, Carrie Mack was talking to us about the gift bags that we give out during our Ash Wednesday drive through And of course, some of you may be joining us from other states or from other parts of the world. We do want to let you know that if you would like to receive one of these bags, we will be happy to mail one to you. We just need you to let us know, and you can do that by sending a little email to info at mumconline.com. Info at mumconline.com. That does bring us to the close of our service today. I want to encourage you to remember that that Teze worship service is being sent out tonight. We hope that you'll take 30 minutes or so to engage with that con contemplative worship service and really receive what God has for us through it. And I hope that you plan to join with us next Sunday morning in either of our in-person worship services at 8 o'clock or 9.15 or again here on Facebook Live at 11 a.m. In the meantime, would you receive this benediction? Go in peace to love and to serve the Lord Jesus. Go in peace to know the very heart and character of God by getting to know the person of Jesus Christ. Go in the peace and the power of God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary for you. Sanctuary, pure and holy, tried and true, with thanksgiving, I'll be a living sanctuary.